Wherever you go, always let respect go ahead of you, and you will never be wrong. This was a life-changing thought I got from my spiritual father, and it has helped me to live a life of honor. Welcome to this episode of Leaders Arise. I am Demola Awoyele. Today, I am discussing on Attitude of Honor Part 2. Last episode, I began by teaching you about the subject of honor, still on our ongoing series on Beatitude, Beautiful Attitude. So today, I want to take the subject further by discussing on some other dimensions of honor. Last episode, I did encourage you to understand the place of honoring God in becoming whatever it is that God has ordained you to become. Because once you honor God, He honors you in return. And if God does not honor you, no man can honor you. Honor is given. You don't grab it. It is given to you. It is given you. When God places His honor upon your life, men are duty-bound to honor you. And the way God can place His honor upon your life is by you ensuring that you honor God with your life, with your body, with your time, your talent, and your treasure. And that was our discussion at the last episode of this life-changing Leaders Arise broadcast. And today, we take it a step further. Now, I want to discuss on honoring men. Honoring men. Romans 13 tells us, all right, to give honor to whom honor is due. First Peter 2 17 tells us to honor all men. And I want to teach you and add one more to it to even give honor to whom honor is not due. Very quickly, I will emphasize or reiterate what I said again. Number one, give honor to whom honor is due. Number two, give honor to whom honor is not due. And of course, honor all men. And I love that. Honor all men. First Peter 2.17 or thereabout. So it means that you should have an attitude that honors all men. And I want to begin from there. Then I will now teach you to honor those that honor is not due. Then of course, to honor those to whom honor is due. So let me discuss with you very quickly. Why must you honor all men? Number one, all men are created in the image of God. Now, you must not segregate in honoring people. Do you know why? Because honor actually means that you understand that men are created in the image of God. And that to me is the number one reason why people are to be, have to be honored. You are not honoring people because of their size. You are not honoring people because of their shape. You are not honoring people because of their substance, what they have or what they don't have. You are not honoring people because of what they do or do not do. You are not honoring people because of their gifts or, la or talent. You are not honoring people because of whatever it is that you might see them to be. But you are honoring people fundamentally because they are created. In the image of God. And it suffices to say that when you honor God with the mindset that they are created in the image of God, you are honoring God without knowing. So what you are, I know we say this to spiritual leaders, that when you honor a spiritual leader, you are honoring the God behind the leader. I also feel that if you honor people, you are honoring God that created them. All right. Let's assume that you take your time to create something very powerful. You spent your time to create it, maybe a gadget, maybe whatever. You spend all you you spend time, and you when you create it, you say, "Wow, fantastic! It was good." Only for you to go meet your friend, and you see that your friend is treating as a trash 
the thing that you, you took your time to create, how would you feel? The person might say, I have to run, is my, is my, is my, is my, is my own. <laughs> like they say in our language. At least it's mine. The father is yours, but somebody created it before you can even get it. All right? That's why you can't take a Nigerian note or a US dollar and treat it anyhow. You can go to jail for it. Why? Because the integrity of that country is at stake. You don't have to roll. This Naira note, they are mine. This dollar note, they are mine. I can tear them. I can rough handle them. I can use them. Golf. They can use them to smoke weed and all of that. After all, it's your own, but it's carrying the signature of a government. The government of Nigeria, the government of US, and all of that. The same thing with every human being you meet. Even if they are your drivers, or they are your servants, or they are, they are the lower rank, and f- rank of the society, when you honor them, you are honoring them with the consciousness that these are created in the image of God. Just the way you won't take it lightly, all right, when somebody maltreats what you spent your time to create, I don't think God will take lightly to when you treat unjustly, when you treat dishonorably the people that God took his time to create. It doesn't matter who they are. God took his time to create people. If I went God finished creating man, God said it was good. It, was, it doesn't matter how people now turn out afterwards, but we are honoring them because they are created in the image of God. Why must you honor your spouse? She is created in the image of God. He is created in the image of God. That your spouse is the gift of God to you. That your spouse carries the signature of God. Why must you honor your, 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 your staff? Why must you honor your church members? Why must you honor the cab driver? Why must you honor the cobbler? Why must you honor the accountant? Why must you honor the cleaner, the janitor? Why must you honor whoever it is you meet, the, the, the office clerk and whoever? Because that person is created in the image of God. So it is not first about who they are. It's not first about how they look. It's not first about what they do or what they do not do. It is first and fundamentally about who created them and in whose image are they created. So if you believe and know that men are created in the image of God, men carry the signature of God, you need to honor men. Number two, you honor men all right, because no matter how bad anybody is, there is something good about that person. Did you see that now? Why must you honor all men? No matter how bad somebody is, there is something good about that person. That person may have a billion things that are not good about him or her, but I can bet it with you, that person has at least one thing that is good about that person. So honor says, I choose to see the good, the good side of this person. And I will appreciate him for that. Because honor actually tries on estimation. Estimation. When you esteem somebody or something highly, you will honor that person or thing. And there is no way to esteem somebody correctly unless you see that person for what they are. You see the better side of that person. So I want to encourage you today. One of the attitudes that leaders must have in their everyday engagement with people is to always see the good side of people. Like I've often taught you in Leaders Arise that what you are looking for is what you will get. If you keep focusing on the negative, you will still keep getting the negative. But if you focus, if you look for the positive, I know your wife is a nagging wife. Your husband is an uncaring husband. But can you for once just sit down and ask yourself, despite how nagging this woman is, what is that positive side about her? She still cooks my food even though she nags. I've got to appreciate her. It still provides fathering for my children even though I, I see him as irresponsible. I appreciate him for that. I still, I, still, I still answer to his son's name, if that is the way you practice what to do in your own uh, side. I will honor him for that. I'm carrying his son's name. I honor him for giving that privilege. No matter how, how bad or unanointed your pastor is, honor him. Like we still carry your, your referee form to him to fill and he appends his signature, honor him. I know some people, that's what, the only thing they remember their pastor for. 
Pastor, I've just gotten an appointment. They said I should, I should look for two referees, one pastor and one professor. Pastor, come and sign. I said, Pastor, we sign. Amen. Pastor, we sign. So I know you can't preach well, but I know him that I can still append the signature to your referee form or your guarantor's form, as the case may be. Are you following me today? So honor says I'm going to look at the positive side of this person. Yeah. I know the cab driver that drove you, maybe from your workplace to your house, the man is looking on camp, maybe. The man is cantacorous, maybe. But honor him for the fact that he put his vehicle on the road to convey you to your destination. After, if not, probably you will have trekked, but that he put his car on the road, he was larger than enough, even they were going to pay him anyway to allow you to enter his vehicle. And he gave you a good drive, maybe, to wherever you are going. Honor him. So honoring all men means that we will look for the best, the good side of all men. We will not focus on the negative. We will not focus on what they are not doing. We will focus on what they are doing. We will not focus on the bad things they are doing. We will focus on at least one thing that they are doing. And listen to me, what you are looking for is what you will get. Because somebody might say, Pastor, you don't understand. I can't see any bad, good thing about this person. It's because you are not finding, you are not looking for it. You are, you, are, you, are, you are too focused on the negative, so you can't see any good thing. Because there's a blindness of focus. Blind, focus blinds. When you focus on bad things, you won't see good things. But when you shift your focus from the bad to the good, you will discover that. In fact, that person that you think is good for nothing, you will start seeing so many good things about that person. It can be your spouse at home, it can be your boss at work, it can be your friend, it can be your pastor, it can be your church member, it can be the cab driver, it can be the janitor, it can be your house help at home, whoever they are, when you start focusing on the good side of their life, because what you focus on magnifies. If you focus on the good side, the good side magnifies. If you focus on the negative side, that is what you will keep saying. So that's the second reason why you have got to honor home. And number three, the third reason why you have got to honor home is because... One way or the other, people have been a blessing to you. In this side of the world, we are too quick to forget what people have done for us. We are too quick to forget. And that's one disease that God must cure humanity of. And you can't be a great person or a leader who forgets what people have done for them. I've taught you before in Leaders Arise, stop looking for people to appreciate you. Do good for people and move on. God is the rewarder. Don't do something good for somebody and now sit on it and say, this person must all know me for what I've done. No, 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 no. That's not how to live. But I'm not, I'm not talking to people. I'm talking to you, the recipient of what somebody has done to you. Honor them. Honor your parents because they brought you to this world. They trained you. Last week, I celebrated my birthday. My mom was in, with us in the house. After I wake up, she was praying for me and all of that. And all that. I had to appreciate her. I said, mom, thank you. For raising me to the man, raising me up to become the man I've become today. She prayed for me, she appreciated me, but I appreciated her more because there won't be Pastor Demo life now for her. So why must I honor my mom? Number one, she brought me to this world. Number two, she raised me up. I know you might be saying, Pastor, I was not privileged to have a parent that raised me up. I can't, I didn't even see my dad, I didn't even see my mom. I was given birth to and dropped in a gutter or orphanage home. But appreciate the fact that they brought you to this world. That somebody carried you in a womb for nine months, she deserves honor. That somebody made his sperm available to fertilize the egg of your mother to give back to you, even though they said that man is irresponsible. Honor him for the mere fact that he was a channel fire which you came to this world. So in honoring all men, you have to this, you have to find out what people have done for you. Don't be ungrateful, don't be an ingrate. No wonder in Psalm 103, the psalm says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not every of his benefits. That means human beings have the capacity to forget. But great leaders don't forget. They don't forget those that God uses as ladders to bring them to where they are. Because sometimes success can be intoxicating. When you have become what you have been dreaming to become, you want to care less about who was instrumental to your getting there. And know that nobody can become success alone. There is no self-made man. If you ever hear anybody tell, I'm a self-made lady, I'm a self-made man, that person is lying or deceiving himself or is ignorant. Everybody is a product of contribution of other people. So honoring all men says, find out what somebody has done for you and honor him for that. 
Yeah, honor him for that. And there is nothing too small to honor somebody for. Honor your wife for giving you a good meal. Honor your wife for, 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 for consenting to marry you. Honor your pastor for preaching to you. Honor him for providing pastoral guidance and for praying for you. Honor him. Honor your lecturer on campus for teaching you without it, which, which you will not be a graduate today. Honor. Recognize what people have done for you and honor them. Honor them. That is the way life works. Honor people. Honor people. Find out what people have done for you. Honor them. Don't be forgetful. Somebody said if we forget our problem, the same way we forget our blessings, we'll have much more peace. We forget our blessings too quickly, but we remember our problem too, you know, too quickly also. If we forget our problem, the way we forget our blessings, we will have much more peace than we currently have. Because we forget our blessing, but remember our problem. But God wants you to remember your blessings and forget your problem. That was why a songwriter sang, count your blessings. Make, name them one by one, and it will surprise you what the Lord has done. Can you count your blessings? You will find reasons to honor God. Can you count your blessing as an employee in that company? You will find reason to honor your boss. Can you count your blessing as a member of that church, as a pastor in that church? You will find reason to honor people in that church. Honor the pastor, honor the members. So how do I ensure that I honor all men? I must ensure that I find out what people have done for me and I will appreciate them. I will honor them for it. I wish to say this a billion times. Find out what people have done for you and honor them for it. And can I also say today that there are two ways to live a life of honor. Number one, live a life of honor on a daily basis. Then number two, do acts of honor on some special occasions. Do live a life of honor on a daily basis, but deliberately do acts of honor. There is an everyday way to live a, a life of honor, but there are times you have got to strategically and preparedly do some act of honor. Act of honor. And, those, and life will always provide you opportunities to show honor. Don't miss those opportunities. Don't miss those opportunities. Don't miss those opportunities. Don't miss those opportunities. That your boss at work is having his retirement. Honor him. Celebrate him. Yeah, celebrate him. Having his retirement, don't say good readers to bad rubbish. Thank God you finally need this department. No, honor him if you want to last in that department too. Because honor is a seed. What you give is what you get. If you don't give honor, you can't get honor. If you don't honor people that have gone ahead of you, you can be honored by those who are coming behind you. So instead of only living a life of honor, look for strategic moment that you practice honor. Practice honor. Your wedding anniversary, practice honor. Honor your wife. Honor your husband. Look for strategic moment to practice honor. Practice honor. Practice honor. Even when you lose your parents, the way you bury your parents too can be a way to show honor. Some people just bury their parents anyhow. They have to run. He has died or she has died. No. And that will probably justify why people spend money on burial. But life is not a waste. If it's not just sending money on what is not. But to give your parents a befitting burial is part of honor. I don't know how, but I want to say that uh, if there's anything like that, the spirit of that uh, departed folk will be blessing, folk will be blessing you. Because you honor them even at their beds. At their death, but don't wait till somebody dies anyway before you honor the person. Honor them while they are still alive. Because some people, the best kind of honor they have ever shown their parents and whoever it is has been the blessed is when that person is no more. That person died on a hospital bed, no care. You didn't even check on the person. Now the person has died. You want to kill 1,000 cows. That's no honor. That's, that's, that's something else. So honor people while they are alive, but I'm saying look for strategic moment. There will always be such opportunities. You must be quick to spot them and make use of them. When the father of uh, Jacob and Esau was about to die, said, I'm about to die. I want you to go out there to go and fetch venison for me, such as my soul loves. The children didn't start grumbling and say, what kind of father is this one? No, that is a strategic moment. They have got to honor their father. 
And that honor provoked the blessing in their lives. It was that blessing that made all the difference in who, to, as to who they became in life. To look for strategic moments to honor people. Alright, so wherever you go, let honor. Then the last as I round up, honor those to whom honor is not due. Are there people in your life that they have done you so bad? They have been so wicked? Maybe your parents, maybe your boss, or whoever they might be. They have been so bad, they have injured you. They are, if honor is not due them, go a step further and honor them. In fact, that kind of honor will give you some blessings that are unusual. Now, this person does not deserve honor. He has done wickedness. He has been so bad. He has cheated me. But you go ahead to honor the person. Now, the last note, honor involves giving. Yeah, honor involves giving. It's not, I'm not trying to raise offering, but I'm saying, oh no, honor involves giving. When you say you honor someone, something leaves you. You can respect somebody from your heart or by your, but when you say you honor, it's good. Honor the Lord with your substance. So package something to honor who you love or to, 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 to give to who you honor. Then for something, you give your time, your treasure, your, your, your substance to honor the person that you claim to honor. I hope today's episode of Leaders Arise has been a blessing to you. I've just discussed on the subject of honor and I want to encourage you live life with the attitude of honor and your life will be honorable. Your destiny will be great as God as ordained it to be. May that grace to live a life of honor comes upon you. Come upon you. And may this season be your best season ever. Thank you for your time with me on today's episode of Leaders Arise. I look forward to hearing from you on our various channels till we meet again at the next episode. Go right there and win with Jesus. Bye for now.